another guy out there that I think that, you know, we talk about star power. We talk about somebody being protected. I think Anthony Ogogo is somebody that when I listen to this man speak, when I see this guy, the way he carries himself, um, he kind of has that star swagger to him. Very much reminds me of a Jade, reminds me of a Britt Baker, kind of has that natural confidence. Um, and honestly, in this regard too, just like those two characters we talked about, I could see this guy being a face or a, or a heel in, With a story. in over the course of his career, right? I, like his story, you know, we, you and I were talking a lot about this today, that, that interview, um, that segment that came out. And I'll let you kind of dive in on this one because I felt like you and I both were very impressed by the backstory of Anthony and his journey to this point. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, go out, look, look, find him on Twitter, check out that promo. Bonds, what was your impression of his in-ring debut and the build-up to it? How do you? What are your? What are your takeaways from Anthony Gogo's big debut tonight? Well, speaking first on the on the promo that we watched earlier, uh, Anthony talked a lot about why he had to retire from boxing um, and how hard he had to work to get to where he is. He he basically um, had a bunch of injuries uh, long term. He had eight fractures in his in his orbital bone and went blind in his left eye um because of of you know boxing which that's a really tough sport obviously <laughs> um he had like a torn achilles he had a lot of different stuff go wrong and uh i think that he kind of showed tonight man i can i'm an athlete i can go because he beat what was his name cole carter <laughs> something yeah, yeah yeah he beat him in one punch he punched him in the gut and knocked him out yeah and it was so just it was so fun to watch that because he just showed all that that stuff that we wanted to see and just one punch just took the dude out yep. and that's what you have you have a guy that is a legit fighter who's good on the mic who can talk who hasn't done this very long you know this is this is his first match mm-hmm. and he ended a guy so quickly and i think that they know what they're doing here they have a guy that People know around the world he's a star. He's just because he's not a star in the United States or like as a wrestler, he is a star around the world. People know who he is. And he went out there and showed the night, hey, I'm going to go out there and do my thing. I'm going to knock you out because that's what I do. Mm-hmm. And I think it was a really, it, it was an elite, obviously, for me because I really enjoyed how they presented him in his first match because he didn't have to do anything entertain, like fly, flying crazy stuff. He went out there and punched somebody in the gut. Yep, and I think that that's really telling for what they're going to do with him in the ring. He's going to be one of those guys that's just a brawler Mm -hmm. and a guy that can and you can bank that guy on so many people because he's just he might not be advanced at certain things in the ring. Uh, We don't know because we didn't see it. Uh, We have no idea what he can do. But I think having them present him in this light where he can just go beat somebody with one hand uh, is. Well said. Awesome and cool, yeah. and I think that it really makes the 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 factory look really strong. Having a guy that's never wrestled in a match before, uh, just able to dominate somebody that easily. I, I hear you, and I think that like that finish, you know, punch to the that punch to the gut played off of what happened with the beat down of Cody. And I thought like, you know, yeah. obviously Anthony hit that punch to the gut to, to Cody and, and he crumpled to the mat too. You know, I, I felt like that was a playoff of that. And Definitely. AEW doesn't do those things on a- a- accident, right? That they're a very purposeful company with things like that. I like that, like sort of that look back at the last week and the natural progression of where they're going to go with the story. Um, I also feel like, when we look at Anthony and we see like this, this story of like how he got here, the line from that promo where he talks about, he, you know, they say that sharks are born swimming. I, awesome. I was born, I was born fighting. I'm a fighter. I was born fighting. That was, it's, that was one of those moments where that's a clip. AW should utilize for a long time, man. This dude, his backstory about like, you know, literally he talks about I was born with my umbilical cord wrapped around my neck. I, I like as a baby, There's I had to fight. I had to fight for the, my last breath. Dude, that that was one of those promos where, again, not only can this dude walk the walk, but he can talk the talk too. Um, if you have a guy who's this polished, 
this established as an international superstar. I mean, a, again, a big deal in the UK um, that can then also talk that kind of game that he can talk. Oh, the, sky, the, the sky's the limit for this dude, man. I really see like a real place for him here. And, and what I like too, man, is, you know, AEW has gotten a lot of, there's a lot of fans out there who are like, man, you know, I actually I got involved in this this little back and forth where like this dude was talking about does anybody in AEW work out right and and like w- I was like all right like you're way off base because you clearly haven't even seen you haven't seen Miro but like let's be real like there are a lot of guys who are smaller in AEW right there that's that there are they they have a lot of these guys like Darby Allen guys who are just naturally smaller the bucks are tag team champions really like when you look at our our champions in the, in the scope slider of the builds. company slider builds right there is a need for a guy like anthony to quickly interject himself into this roster right you need guys like him who aren't doing a bunch of flips who aren't like these big showmans who are just doing this acrobatics and stuff off the top rope and all that stuff you need those brawlers those big, strong, bad dudes who will punch you in the face, punch you in the gut, knock you out cold, and leave you laying, and who is believably a bad, like a brawler who will just punch you and knock you out without second thought. That's the type of guy that is missing in the AEW landscape. We talked about how Jade is such a needed piece of the puzzle for the women's division that there's not many people like her in the women's division. This is a very unique piece of the puzzle for the AW, the men's division. They're just a guy who has the size, has the polish, who can do it all. Um, I mean, even when we talk about the bigger guys in AEW, like you talk about a Brian Cage, I love Brian Cage's power. Uh, yeah. Not just strength, but his over his power and his control. But there's a difference. Yeah. But so much of his offense is based off of his athleticism. I mean, the dude is an amazing athlete. Lance Archer is another dude. Like he'll do the top rope backflip uh, out it's of the people. 6'10. You're not gonna you're yeah. not gonna see Anthony do stuff like that, bro. I got a feeling this guy is just here to fight. And I Very really fighter. That's yes, I, I think that that's a missing piece, and it's gonna he's quickly gonna be a very important piece that I think a lot of fans are going to be pockets of fans out there that he's going to cater to that they're going to rally behind. And I I think that that's something that I'm going to be looking forward to going forward. Cause you know, I love myself like the FTRs. I love those throwback guys. And this is a type of guy who kind of hits that niche. And I really enjoy that. You know, 